Okie dokie. So, down here are my possible replacements. Um, and, uh, duh, I just, uh, kind of rethinking my steps here and boy a thought went through my head uh, late yesterday when I was thinking about this briefly and went right through my head in one side and out the other prior to removing this and I could do this now I suppose uh, I should have really tested the voltage that's being put on these capacitors the real voltage and this one I just took out I should have really checked the actual voltage that this thing's sustaining. And the reason is this one's rated for 63 volts. Everything I've got, here's my selection here, are rated for 50. 50 volts. And I'm left here scratching my head. Actually these two are 40. These are 40s. They look almost identical to the one I took out. And I think all these are 50s. 50 volt and that's 63 volt capacitors what's the rating on these guys 25 225 volt and these things just paralleled up don't think so No, they're not, um, because the negative is connected to the positive, one to the other. And they're certainly not s put in series, so this must be a double-ended power supply, producing a uh, negative and a positive voltage. So be negative voltage and a positive voltage of something less than 25. So let's assume it's 20. So that would be uh, 20 and 20, that'd be a 40, 40 volts in this thing. Uh, one single capacitor here rated for 63 volts. Sounds like it's built to take the 40 volts that are coming out of here based on my assumptions. So if that's the case, putting a 50 volt capacitor in there should do the trick. Now, what a dummy that I... I didn't test these things before doing this. Just, that's just a little lack of... Uh, wow, I'm not lacking in experience. Um, just a lack of thought, I think is really what it is. And you know, fools rush in. Uh, I kind of rushed in a little bit on this. As cautious as I often am. Because my thinking is, well, just pop that thing out, pop another one in, and move on, Jimmy. I think that is what I'm going to do. And darn it all, I should have looked at my video to get the uh, polarity correct here. What a knucklehead. I'm pretty sure it was this way. I'm pretty sure this is negative. Oh, look, it's running all over the place. You know what? I don't even have to check. Definitely, I know which one's negative. The famous last words. It's the famous last words being spoken right here. So let's look at this guy is 50 volts. Four point seven. It's physically pretty much the same or slightly larger than a sixty-three volt. What are the chances this is significantly bigger than four point seven? Not not very good. These ones look almost identical. I mean physically they're identical size. But their volt rating is forty means the capacitance might be a little higher in this package. And what is it? You know, I, I just, I've looked at these, i got a bunch of these, I've looked at them before and I can't figure out what it is. Quite clearly there's a 015 written on it, 15. 15 microfarads. Does that make sense? Here's a 10. That's a 10 at 50. 15 at 40. I guess it's possible. This one is a uh, 
68 at 50. 68 or 6.8. Looks like 68 at 50. Well, let's stick one in, you know, and see what happens. I think that's probably a, a good approach. <laughs> so we'll go with the uh, 4.7 at 50. Yeah. We'll take the negative as the shorter one. Now I'll just put this in, I'll leave the leads, I won't cut them off or anything, so I can take it out and it's not doing the trick. You know, another thing I could have done here, and I, I didn't mention it, but I'm really kicking myself in the rear for this, is I could have simply clipped on extra capacitance and paralleled these ones I'm suspicious of, and then tested the unit and see if it makes a difference. And I get really kind of proof positive that this buzz is coming from this power supply. That's a real, that's a, you know, boy, I'm winning the duh award on this. Multiple times, a multiple duh winner. That's okay. I just have to promise myself to get it right next time. Do things right next time. Just tack this. He's uh, looking for his solder here. It's cold enough in my shop. Actually, I'm not cold at all. I feel quite comfortable. But I did turn on some of my tube uh, testing equipment here just to just to put just to put some radiant heat, or at least balance against the cold. Everything in here. taken extraordinary measures in my house. My house is poorly insulated. It's built in the 60s. When uh, the answer to insulation was, what do you need that for? You got a furnace. Um, by the way, the furnace in this house is original. The one you keep hearing going on and off in my videos, it's, it's from 1964. It's never been changed and I'm not about to change it. Let's take a close look at that. Sure, that's tacked in there. The negative lead is onto the this grounded outer part of the tray, so I'm, I'm quite confident, quite comfortable, let's put it that way, with that. So I'm going to plug this back into the circuit here. Oh, 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 oh. Let's move this guy around. Plug it back in. I'm going to turn it on and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe the hum is gone already. Yeah, so I've taken some extraordinary steps to keep my house warm uh, because it's so poorly insulated, especially the doors, my front door. Wow, this is not easy to go in. The front door is terrible. Holy jumper, where do you push the wires up in there? Wow. this upside down, don't I? <laughs> you see, I'm winning the Duh Award again, only this time I uh, saved myself. That's a little better. Um, so I've covered my front door with a blanket, believe it or not. Just propped it up with some long sticks, kind of... I know the glue they have on this. So they glued these capacitors in. I got glue all over this contact. Bad manufacturer, bad. Um, my 
back door. I have a regular inside door and then I have a screen door on the outside, very typical. In between, I have a big sheet of foam. It basically came from a uh, one of those foam sheets you put on your bed to improve the comfort of the bed. It's pretty old and we don't use as much better things we have now. But I hung on to this old piece of foam and presto, I cut it same size as the door opening, just shoved it in between. And believe it or not, it turned out to be very practical and uh, really helps. The temperature on the inside of my back door with the foam, this morning I took my uh, infrared gun and ran around the house a little bit, was four degrees on the inside of my door. My front door, I will it's behind a blanket, so I'm not gonna bother disturbing it, but I'll bet you it's below freezing on the inside of my front door. And my in uninsulated walls read 15 uh, degrees. That's not that's not too bad. 21 is comfortable. 23, 24 is warm. And the uh, floor, as you know, below me was 12. So another thing I do, um, I have old windows, front, a couple of front windows, they leak like sieves. Don't care much in the summer, but in the winter, they're literally, there's literally air is coming through them. You can put your hand up and feel it whistling through. I put that shrink plastic uh, over them, and I also shrink plastic my upper windows. My house is a back split, so I have an upstairs. And I think of it like a hot air balloon. And the hot air heads upstairs and puts pressure on the upstairs windows trying to get out. And the cold air is trying to get in on the lower part of the house, like down here. So I just plastic cover the upstairs windows. Um, I figured out how to do it uh, efficiently over the years and that makes a gigantic difference. I'm probably saving myself 500 bucks by doing that alone. And the last thing I do when it gets really cold, below 10, uh, I leave my oven on. Now I know, you know, common the common thinking is you never try to heat your house with your oven. I'm not exactly sure why that's considered a problem. I mean, it's just a heating element in there. It's really no big deal. I suppose you could turn it way up, you know, 400 degrees and left it for seven days running. Maybe that isn't the best thing to do with your oven, but uh, I don't have mine up high. I just have it up, uh, on, today it's set around 200. I just left it on all night. And what that does is when you come into the kitchen and, you know, you're facing all this cold, cold stuff, there's something in there that's actually radiating a bit of heat. And just the way things work, we kind of feel the average around us. It doesn't really supply much heat to the house, I suppose a little bit. Um, so 200 is a little high, usually even around 150, just so it isn't ice cold, just to make it a source of warmth. And that's what I do. And I uh, also here in Ontario, we have a, uh, a pricing scheme for electricity that's based on time of day. It's called time of use pricing. And the price of electricity is twice during the day what it is at night and all weekend. All weekend it's half price. Well, it's not really half price, right? It's all relative. But uh, certainly you don't want to be using a lot of electricity in the day. Uh, let me just finish this because I have one, one more piece to say. Um, so uh, I certainly have the oven on uh, past, uh, I think it's 7 or 9, I'm not sure, all night long. And then on really cold days like this, I just leave it on all day too. Uh, I don't think it runs my hydro bill up that much really. And besides my furnace back here is uh, gonna be helped a little bit. You know, you gotta look in your house and see where your thermostat is located because that's what your furnace works on. It works on the thermostat, right? It just, it's a thermostat heater. It's not a house heater. It's a thermostat heater. Take a look where your thermostat is and uh, you can make some considerations. Uh, mine is uh, upstairs in the upper part of the house, so it's in the upper part of the balloon. And uh, it actually does get set back by extraneous heat coming from the lower part of my house, which can heat the upper part because the air, hot air flows up there. And if you get enough of that, like when we're cooking dinner, maybe we're going to cook something for an hour and a half in the oven with the temperature up pretty high, uh, the rest of the house gets a little cooler. Not the thermostat. The thermostat is always where it's supposed to be. So the last thing is clothes dryer. This this is the worst, most monstrous energy eating machine in anybody's house. 
electric or gas, I think the situation would be similar. What are you doing when you turn on your electric clothes dryer? You are paying a lot of money. It's the most powerful heater in the house. You are paying a lot of money to heat this air, and then you are shooting it out a hole in your wall, blasting it out a hole in your wall, and every last little scrap of air that goes out, something's got to come in your house to replace it. And guess what it is? It's outside air filtering in through all the cracks and crannies in your house, which every house has. Um, the average house uh, replaces its inside air every three hours entirely. So if you think you're heating up your house and then holding this uh, warm air in your house, you're not. It's, it's taking off. It's getting out here and there. Turning on that dryer is just, to me, it's uh, terrifying. I'm terrified when it comes on. I can really hear the furnace start working harder. So what I do is I make sure we don't vent outside. We uh, have a little valve thing. I flip it and uh, the uh, dryer vents inside. You get a little bonus of uh, humidity with that, which is, you know, it's as dry. It's drier than the Sahara Desert in a house in a cold environment like this. So every little bit of humidity it doesn't hang around long at all. It's helpful though. So that's what I do. I, uh, I do all those things to try to compensate uh, or to try to get the biggest bang out of my buck, my heating buck here. So I encourage you all to think about the dryer in your house. If you've got a dryer, think about it. We run ours only after the uh, peak price is gone or on the weekends. We don't run it during the day, ever. And we run it in the evenings because electricity cost is half. And I'm sure it's, it's paying off. Anyway, okay, enough lecturing. We're all set to go here. You're all waiting for me to plug this in and see if it hums. Oh, I gotta, I gotta hook it up a little bit here. Okay, then let me hook it up a bit and we'll see what we, so we can hear it. That would be helpful.